Let's take a moment to begin learning the use of the blur, sharpen and smudge tools. We'll begin with the blur tool. Now let's create a new document and we'll make it 400 by 400 in pixels. Don't worry about resolution. We'll make sure that the color mode is RGB. We're going to divide this up into uh, quarters. Quick tip for finding the center, turn on the crop tool. When the crop tool is on, you have this little center pivot and you can drag out then from your rulers a guide. If your rulers aren't showing, hit Control or on the keyboard or Command or I believe for uh, Mac. So one from the top and one from the left and now we have the center point and it will be quite easy for us to divide this canvas <coughs> into quarters. I'm going to turn on snapping so I can easily snap to those guides. If we go to snap, make sure it's ticked, in this case it is, and under snap to select guides. And now when I drag over to the guides, yeah, my selection will snap to it, you should experience the same thing. If you're not seeing your guides, you might click on view and show and make sure that guides is ticked as well. There is a hotkey for that, control and semicolon. Now, what we're going to do is just create something that will uh, show us the functionality of the, the blur tool. few different solid colors is what we're going for. The G key jumps to the paint bucket if that's the one selected in the menu. Make sure it's not gradient. Okay. And then white over there and black over here. We can now hide the rule, the uh, guides and the rulers. Control or hides the rulers, and control uh, semicolon hides the guides. Take your blur tool and take a look at the options. Simple enough: size and hardness and brush. Same uh, options that we have for all brush-based tools. Blend mode, which you're obviously familiar with at this time, or at this point. <coughs> Strength, so that's basically um, how powerful the effect will be. It's at 45% at the moment. So what gets blurred? Well, the values of the pixels get blurred into each other. Let's see. So the black pixels un under the um, area of influence which is this circle here, are becoming redder because they're taking the value of the pixels to the left inside of the circle of influence. And conversely, on the left, the red pixels are taking on some of the black. Now this will happen here with the white as well. So not only is the, um, the saturation and the brightness or darkness of the pixel taken into account, the color also is taken into account. So all of those values get mixed. Okay. So if I whack this up to a hundred, that'll enhance the effect. Obviously, if I blur in an area that's already one solid color, nothing's going to happen because you're not giving the algorithm any data to work with. It's all based on the contrasts of the color values of the pixels within the area of influence, which is dictated by this little circle here. Okay, 
So that's how the uh, blur tool works. It can be very useful uh, when we're editing photographs and uh, if we need to soften a certain area, say of somebody's face, some area of the face perhaps may have become a little sharper than it should be and it should be soft. The blur tool softens things in, in photographs. It's good for that. Okay, now we can also do the exact opposite. We can sharpen things and that's what we're going to cover in the next lesson.